Hey everybody, um, Leslie here. Now, I can't show you how we made this piece. We didn't videotape it. I had two pieces. But this is another uh, piece where we painted the deli paper and then we glued it down with the gel medium and I am about to resin this. Now, I just want to show you, we still have scrap pieces of paper. Uh, there were, we used all the teals, so, you know, colors like African Jade, this is dominantly African Jade, colors like Majestic Blue. Uh, we ended up not using the Bolivian Blue, but this is what that Bolivian Blue looks on the deli paper, if that's your thing. Um, I'm, I'm in love with that color. I just got to find two more colors to kind of go with it to do a piece. Um, this wonderful, wonderful deep green is that it's a turquoise. Here is the mystic blue, but then there's a little bit of a peacock feather mixed with some Payne's Gray. Sorry, I'm going a little bit faster, but if you mix like a tiny little freckle of Payne's Gray, depends on how blue you want it, with a peacock feather, you can make really deep, rich teals. Again, here's more Bolivian blue, but we brushed some of the African Jade over the top. This is mostly African Jade and Sky Blue. And then all the areas that were white, which I weren't that many, but you can see in the reflection here what might have been white. We took uh, um, Interference Blue Mica, Blue Pearl on our website, mixed it with just the Clear Vivid. We have a little pot of it here. And we just kind of brushed it over wherever the paper was dry. So when it's under the resin, it's going to have color. Um, here's a few more strips. Here's some of that Mystic Blue. Love that color. Absolutely love that color. And that Peacock Feather mixed with the pain African Jade. And this pretty, pretty light blue here is Stargazer, just so you know you've got variations. Okay, so we kind of did the same process. My girlfriend and I worked on these two pieces yesterday. It was so much fun. And by the way, pure collaboration. Now, she did this little piece and she base coated her little edges. I think this is a little six by six with African Jade. She took bits of paper, paper and kind of, she had mounds of them on top of one another actually and then eventually glued them down and kind of scrunched the paper because she was, she really loves the texture. And what was cool is when the whole thing was done, because she only did the teals, she took some French lilac. One of our uh, primary elements and just took some with her finger and kind of rubbed it all over here. And the bit, one of the benefits of our product being water soluble and resin is insoluble is doing this kind of treatment, last minute treatment on something before you're going to resin. It's not going to move because the resin's not going to move it because it's insoluble with this stuff. So these accents are going to stay where she put them. Then we decided to do a big piece and this big piece, I know again you won't see the video of it, sorry, but you will see the end result once it's resined. So I base coated the whole thing with uh, like a dark Bolivian blue and some of that peacock feather green and just kind of mishmashed them all over one another. You can see variations of the blue and the green in the side of the canvas here where it got painted. And this, that just makes it so no matter where someone turns the canvas, they're going to see it. But one thing I want you to see is now it's completely dried. See this little bit of paper that is clung over from us gluing it down? Before I resin, I'm going to clean this up. This is one thing we didn't cover in the red and blue video. All four corners have it, as does uh, Heather's little piece here. She has a little area, and she wants, wanted me to touch up the African Jade Vivid anyway, right here. Yeah, she's got a little bit of her paper that kind of went over. So I'm going to take, I have an X-Acto knife. I also have a little tiny knife that I got in the dollar department in my grocery store. I'm not going to make you watch me do it, but I'm just going to very carefully peel back this paper, trim it off, then I'm going to repaint the edges of this one and resin it. 
Same thing, I'll clean up the edges, but I want you to see if you can see the patterns in here. For example, there is actually three squares on top of one in here, here, but then there's another one in reverse. Now, again, it's hard to see what this is going to look under the resin, but all of that texture, you see all this texture? That's all going to be picked up by the light. The one thing we did make sure we did is every part of this thing is glued down. We uh, really were, and I've never actually done a piece with someone else where we both physically collaborated. So while I was base coating this, she was working on her little piece. Then we got together and cut up the papers and she's more of a linear artist, really good with lines. You know, I'm the colorist obviously because I actually mix the colors for the color art line. I'm the, the colorist, the mad scientist that makes it. So the color for me was kind of my thing. Um, hard to say now, all these areas that look like that's green because of the camera, it's picking up green, but these are turquoise, okay? So it will pop probably much prettier turquoise under the resin. But one thing I have to say, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, but to truly sit down and have her say, well, what do you think of this? And I, and I move it, well, what do you think of that? Oh, I like that, okay. She kind of laid the whole thing out like she did on her little one, piles of paper. But she said, you know, this one section is very important to me. I know I love this area here. Something that she loved right around here. And for me, if you can concede and say, you know, I see what you're saying. Open up your mind and look at that other person's viewpoint. I say, you know, I see what you're saying. Let's glue this section down before we do anything else. Because as soon as we change our mind and move the papers around, they may not look the same. So it was... It was a very interesting exercise working together. Um, I am going to touch this up in resin it. I will show you guys the quick resin process and I will show you the results afterwards. Um, sorry, I can't show the process how we glued this down, but um, as you look through this and really stare, you see a sheet this way, a sheet this way, but something's covering it up this way and something's covering it up this way. So it's, it's just a pleasing pattern so your eye would keep moving around as you're looking at it. And of course, it's gonna be hard to tell just how sparkly this is gonna be until you actually see it under resin. And then we did the same thing as hers, where she highlighted some areas violet. Anywhere where we had white spots left on the paper, we just kind of hand rubbed the pigments, little bits here and there. So there's just a little pop of violet through this. See you guys in a bit, bye. Okay, well I got my resin mixed. I got my sides um, painted and touched up. Actually, I recommend removing the deli paper that runs over the sides first. I tried to cut it away with a straight edge. It did not work. I ended up having to paint over the top of the deli paper, making sure that my piece is level. My little doohickey here in the middle is saying, hey, it's level. Fortunately, this is also my paint table, so I'm going to give up my table here for the next few hours because I don't want to move this to the actual resin drying chamber, which is almost as level, until this has had a chance to at least set up. Um, this is a 16 by 20 deep edge canvas, so I'm actually going to do two layers. And according to Art Resin, they recommend that exactly three hours, you could apply a second layer. Now, as I said in the last video, I don't know if it's within the three hours, or if it's exactly three hours. But you know, set a timer and right around three hours or two hours and 45 minutes. Sorry, I see a little edge here. I still probably need to stick down before I resin. I have to touch this up. Um, you can put a second coat on without having to sand. Normally when you apply a second coat, like 12 or 20 hours later, you need to do a rough it up so the next layer is, is beautiful. But if you do it within, not within, at three hours, again, they say three hours, put a second layer. It's like you put um, that much resin on at the exact same time, but you know, it's not gonna flow where the sides at that if you do it in two sections. Anyway, um, we've got it ready. I mixed up a lot, probably more than I needed, but I know I have the second little piece I wanna attend to, but we're gonna do this first. 
And what I do is I pour the resin dead center in the canvas. And pour about half of it. Well, you can already see how metallic that's starting to look underneath that resin. Before you move it around, torch it. also use a heat gun. The whole point of that is to get the bubbles out. Now I'm looking to see if I see something. Looks like something's in there. Before you even start moving it around, inspect your resin. Is there something in there? Is there a little hair? There shouldn't be. I mean my canvas is clean. I'm going to torch it one more time. I don't pop the bubbles. Check it at all angles. You're still going to heat it again after you move it around. Now, I like to spread it with a comb or a pick. The reason why is you're not trying to pull all the resin over the one way and all the resin back the other way. This is a canvas which is not necessarily designed for resin uh, because canvases can sag if they have too much weight on them. But a, a thin, beautiful layer is fine until you're at the point to where you want to invest in cradle wood. That's a wooden canvas or you make your own. I have a friend who makes her own right in the middle of her living room apartment. Crazy. She wanted to learn how to do it, but she taught herself how to do it. Pretty talented, that lady. It's my girlfriend, Heather. Very talented. Anyway, so canvases are... Uh, a less expensive alternative to try. But just remember that too much resin could make it sag because resin dries very hard and stiff and a canvas is pliable. Um, versus wood is a hard surface. So therefore, it's going to have the same drying film, or not film strength, but basically same um, drying surface as the resin needs because the resin dries stiff you want a hard surface. Now if you really want to start spending money on doing more and more canvases there is an artist by the name of Alain Vital, E-L-A-N-V-I-T-A-L. He uses airplane clear coat. Now they have clear coat for the automotive industry. I don't think it's the same. My understanding Sherman Williams sells this. I've not tried to buy it yet, but I did look online and saw something similar to what they were talking about. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning clear coat, by the way, I got new gloves. I've got my long sleeve shirt underneath my Playtex living gloves. We can reuse these because the resin comes right off. The last couple of resinings, I happen to get a little bit on my arms. And even though this stuff is technically non-toxic, you do not want it to stay on your skin for any period of time. And that's art resin's instructions. I'm conveying with you what I learned from them. So anyway, the, air, the uh, clear coat that they use on airplane wings is flexible. It flexes. You know, think of it. Airplane wings have to flex in and out. If you watch what I'm doing, I'm just kind of using the side of this, this pick if I want to pull a little bit more resin over. But if I want to comb it back, I could comb it with the pick style, which means it's only spreading half of it. So it looks like I'm going to have to use the other half of what I mixed, which is fine. Pour that back in the center because I'm seeing it make it most of the way around, but it's not going to go over the edges nicely. Wasn't sure, haven't done this size of canvas. I know that there's a, um, a calculator on the art resin site but I kind of need to know in my own environment. This is a 32 ounce cup and I mixed 10 ounces of each the hardener and the actual resin in there. By the way, somebody asked me about this big tone depressor. This is a craft stick from Walmart. They have them in the big size. They're perfect for mixing resin. And I get my containers like this 32 ounce from the restaurant supply. They come with lids so you could store stuff. Okay, I'm going to torch this again just because there's potential bubbles and when I just uh, If you notice, I kind of glided over 
with a whole piece. I want to make sure that bubbles or pieces of hair are going to be your enemy of this process. That's why I built a resin chamber. I have an area that is a PVC cube covered with plastic. It has a little wooden hood. And after this sits for a few hours, I'm going to do the second coat. Then this little this baby's going to go in the resin chamber and we'll, 8 to 12 hours later it'll set up. Weather is warm enough this time of year where it's not a full 24 hours to set up. I'm going to let a little resin go over the side. But my main purpose for here is to get a nice even coat on the top because I know I'm doing a second coat. Now if you're going to work on canvas, be mindful of your edges. Remember I said canvas has a tendency to say, even just by the very nature that the canvas is trying to draw itself up to the edge and be glued or stapled to the wooden frame, it can pull right on the edges. So you really want to make sure that your edges look even uh, because of the glare of the resin, you need to look side by side. I know a lot of resin video people don't teach you these basics because they're showing you technique or color combination that they used. But I mean, a year ago, all I knew about resin was my boyfriend made surfboards when I was in high school. <laughs> I used to go to Huntington Beach every week to go see him. But that didn't mean I knew actually how to work with resin or color resin or if our pigments would work with resin. Right now this is our pigments painted on the deli paper under the resin. Primary element art pigments and I still have that little jar. This is what was, this is the color base that we use for all of our colors. Uh, this piece was actually painted with Vivid Ultra Metallics. Um, again, I encourage you to watch video. Uh, it's got a red and blue canvas on it. I'll put the details in the description. I don't remember what number it was, the exact description, but it'll show you the process of how I got the color on the deli paper using a gel press plate and uh, cut it up and laid it down and did that red and blue canvas. Again, this piece was done with my girlfriend and I working on this yesterday to get to yesterday as a team. I've never actually had to try to build a piece together with somebody else. I've collaborated on ideas, but we've kind of run off and done our own pieces. And I can say, it was interesting, it was fun, it was fulfilling. It was really a good exercise in collaboration. And I can't wait for her to come back and play more. We had a blast. So, she was dying to see the deli paper process and how it worked and see my red and blue pieces up close and personal besides, you know, on YouTube. Fortunately, we live close enough to where we can share that kind of stuff. Very fortunate to have her that close. Okay, so I'm looking at every angle. I do see one of the textures of the paper lifting up right here. But that's not a piece that's gotten away from us that's not glued down like in the, in the I think it was the red one. If you watch that video on the red one, you'll see it when I pointed it out. It's because we actually need a thicker coat. That's why we're going to do a second resin. Okay. So again, I'm going around the edges, touching it up with this, this pick, hair pick then smoothing the edges with my finger. Whatever ran over the edges, I don't want to have drip marks that I'm going to have to sand or file down to make smooth. So I don't expect much to drip over, but just to be safe before I let this dry, hand it off and say it's done until the next layer. Make sure that all of my drips. Now I come back every five minutes for the first five to 20 minutes, come back and check it every five minutes and kind of smooth the drips off. All I can say is trust me, you do not want to be in a position, I'm just touching up areas where I see uneven stuff and kind of tapping it with my finger. You do not want to be in a position of having to sand this. It's the most disheartening process I've ever gone through in the first few acrylic pours I did with resin and silicone. I did the pores with the silicone. 
and not realizing how hard resin and silicone don't get along or how hard it was to get them to play nice. And now that I know how to do my acrylic varnish barrier, enough, by the way, that's another video if you want to check it out, putting an acrylic varnish barrier between the resin will protect it from the pitting. But uh, still, if I could have watched a video like this before I went through the whole disheartening process of making these beautiful pieces of art and then only to have them resined and have to be sanded twice and re resin twice Ikes to get them finished so hold on I'm going to torch this got some real glare from where that resin is now on there Let's see if I can get that off there we go so I'm going to continue to just look at it at every angle like right here it needs I can see little holes or little pockets that are forming where maybe the resin's uneven and I'll let you guys see the final result when it's dry I'm also going to do a small little uh, layer of resin over hers. This is going to sparkle like crazy. I love this little piece. And I'll give you guys the results in a few hours. Talk to you soon. Hey everyone. So I'm back. These guys are resined. Both these pieces are resined. That's uh, again, because of this lighting and I apologize for the glare. Hard to tell which lamp is this. actually the culprit. I think it's my tallest one in the middle. Yeah, there we go again. Uh, <clears throat> still gonna get glare only because this is resin. So this is a 16 by 20. Uh, the uh, extra gallery canvas. Canvas. I think it's one and a half inch thick. We did two, I did two coats of resin on this. I let it set up, and by the way, I looked that up. It's a between a three and six hour window. They say six hours. Um, I did it right at three and a half, and I worked and worked and worked, and I still, no matter how much I torched it and smoothed it, I still have a couple tiny little bubbles. If they bug me enough, I'm gonna have to sand them and do one really light, just a super light coat. So I think what might have caused that is trying to do that first, uh, that second pour right at three hours. I think the next one I'm gonna try to do it at six hours where the recommended. The reason why you do that is you don't wanna to have to wait 12 hours, sand it, do another layer. 12 hours, sand it, do another layer. So anytime you can do a layer, let it set up like honey for, like you say, the six hours, and do a second layer, that's when the bottom coat of resin and the top coat of resin meld as if they were poured together. And here's a close-up. I love this little piece. We rubbed extra uh, blue pearl mico over the top of this thing. Boy, it's hard how the light doesn't pick this up, but I'm hoping by moving this around enough, you guys can get the point. This thing is stunning in person. She's just gonna hang this on her wall of the bathroom, and the sides were painted with the African jade. Now there's little drips on the bottom, okay? Now a friend of mine whose father was in the resin industry for years, she's from Australia. What she told me to do, and this morning would be the perfect time to do it, is heat these little drips up with a, a heat gun, warm them, and they'll pick right off. Otherwise, you have to take a file. And when I say file, I mean a file. Uh, I'm trying to find the file behind me, but it's got a handle with teeth on it. You literally have to file it off. You don't want to do that. So while this is just in that setup stage, it's only dried maybe 12 hours, it's a perfect time to pick all the little drips of resin 
off the back, off the little piece and the big piece. Okay. Now, because this is just a short little video of show and tell, I didn't show you guys how I did it. Okay. I'm going to throw another little show and tell at you for something that I will do a video on <clears throat> a little bit later. But I want to kind of give you guys an intro. So we've all heard of paint skins, most of us. Those of that you don't know, it's like that little goober that comes off the end of your, maybe the nipple of your paint bottle or when someone's done an acrylic pour, the leftover paint kind of falls off and people are making beautiful cabochons and jewelry with it. And uh, <clears throat> here's a really big, big skin I did. Happened to be the only one I have around to show as an example. It's poured on plastic. Not, this is not anything fancy. I'm not trying to get you too excited by my skin. But my point of this is this is done with regular acrylic. Okay. So regular acrylic is more flexible. Now, what do I mean by regular acrylic? Well, when they make acrylic paint, um, they come in various what they call film strengths. If you think about it, if you're working on fabric, you don't want your fabric stiff. If you're painting on wood, you want a nice lacquer to protect the wood. And you don't want the paint to wick up the green of the wood. So when they make paints, they actually make paints for various film strings. Part of this, I kind of like the back of this more than the front. Anyway, this is a paint skin I poured out a long time ago to see. I was testing to see but this painter's plastic, this is that stuff you can buy in, in rolls of it at Home Depot to lay on the floor when you're painting your living room. Okay, so here's the thing. Acrylic comes in, imagine a scale, I'm just going to turn this way because it's got a line on it. Zero to 100, okay? Zero means acrylic never, ever, ever, ever dries. No matter how long you sit it out, it always stays in the liquid state. 100 means it would shatter as soon as it hits the air on the other end of the scale. So when they're making acrylic paints, let's say your fabric paint is a little bit farther up this scale because you still want it soft. And maybe this is a zero, maybe this is an 18 to a 20. Regular house paint, artist paint. It's kind of sitting in the middle of the scale, but below the halfway mark, so it might be 38 to 40. And the lacquer that goes on a wood table is somewhere in here. It's stiffer, okay? It's, it has what's called a firmer film strength. Golden is one of the only companies, by the way, that I've noticed that they use soft, medium, and hard film strength or firm film strength on their bottles. But most people that are buying it, consumers, may not know what that means, but that, what that, that's what that means. So this is made out of a actually vivid ultra-metallics, uh, the enamel, or acrylic enamel. It's a tiny bit stiffer than a regular paint, but you can see it's still flexible, okay? So years ago, um, older, older people like me, over 50 to 60, well, <clears throat> remember a product from the market called Future Floor Polish. Okay, well oh, that's sure pretty in the camera. Um, over the years though, and I'm going to insert a picture here, somewhere around my studio, I still have my original 18 year old bottle, but I cannot find it for the life of me. But I know I have a photo of it, so I'm going to insert a photo right here where I'm talking so you can see the original bottle, okay? This is what Essie Johnson Wax has changed it to now. They're now calling it Pledge Revive It Floor Gloss. And an Essie Johnson Wax slash Pledge, I don't, I'm not bagging on them, but they've kind of made it confusing because there's one for wood, there's one for floors, for woods, for, and they all have different things. Now, this one says Long Lasting Shrine, Floor Gloss, Revive It. Um, I found a link to a hardware store because I couldn't find it everywhere and they had a great deal. If I got six bottles, they shipped it for free. Anyway, um, Essie Johnson Wax changed the identity of stuff and yet if you Google Future Floor Polish, if you look for videos on it, you're going to find um, polymer clay artists will use it as their top coat like a clear coat of acrylic toy train modelists and hobby modelists, they'll actually dip their body parts, auto body parts in this to get it a clear coat, like clear coating a, 
a car. And the reason why is this is pure styrenated acrylic, which is a firmer strength than the regular acrylic that we're used to using that gives us that flexible skin like I showed you just a few minutes ago. What it does is it actually makes the skins crispy. They come out in chunks. They look like brittle pieces of metal, which you've got to be very careful to peel apart. Okay. Uh, I have them in a strawberry box. This is not the best container to put them in. Um, I've put them in sealed tubs like these. I was showing you these because you can get different shapes. Okay. I found years ago when I was doing this, I was doing a piece, and I'll show you in a minute, my old sunflower, and the rings around the edges gave me the ability to have like partial circles in the center of my sunflower. Um, these are actually, these bags are actually 18 years old. One is ginger peach, one is uh, spice pumpkin, which I'll have to wet them down to even know what they are, okay? So you can put them in a cup, let them dry. Now they're gonna look like they're dry in a couple of days. You wanna let them dry three to four days. You need to be very, very patient. Six to seven days, it's even better. So here's a piece of painter's plastic. I know I have some chunks here that already peeled off. And I left it in the state so you could see what happens. Now. You don't have to make big as batch as this. You could have a little piece, put it in the bottom of the box. Just make sure it's coated with a plastic or rubber, something like this, so it pulls off. And I put a little bit of the Revive, okay? And primer element artist pigments. Yeah, you could do this regular mica powder, but the other effects I'm about to show you in a few minutes, you won't get from regular mica powder. Because primary elements are actually a dry paint that has mica in it. It's an art pigment. We also have a line of pure micas. They're called primary element pure micas. Those are just pure mica that don't have any additional color added. So to repeat this process, and make these absolutely glorious, beautiful flakes. You actually need to use the primary elements to do this. Now these components can be used in, su submerged in uh, as a focal piece on your painting. Uh, I showed this to Marie Fondler Grossman fondly. We more fondly call her a Bissimo. She really thought this would be a great component for her textual artists to be able to add textual components to their pieces. But once it's dry, very carefully, I don't know if I can do this with my gloves. My gloves are not as nimble as my fingers. Carefully peel it off. You will get big pieces, you will get little pieces. Okay, off the gloves. Let's see if I can do it with just my finger. Trying to do it on camera in front of you in real time is not as easy as me sitting, screwing around with this all on my own. Okay, so I'm pushing the plastic up from the bottom and the flakes are peeling off and I can get larger and larger pieces, like at this one, more carefully that I go. And then you just want to find some place to store these in to use them later, okay? Now, just so you know, I'm using them in real time. I have a canvas here, a little bitty canvas here that I've already done a partial metallic swipe over Oof, months ago. This was done on a video when I was showing you guys how to just do background swipes. So I'm just gonna grab some of the blue pieces. You can literally see the ones that I peeled off. We're gonna wrap this guy up. I'm like, going, okay, well, How's that gonna work on a regular camp? Okay, let me do, I'm gonna do this very carefully. And I am not gonna lose this precious stuff. I gotta say, I, I was impatient and impatient. I was worried if this was gonna work the same way as the future. And about a week later, boy, did I get rewarded with all kinds of really pretty metallic components. And so I made lots of different colors to play with. I'm going to grab some of the violet. We're just going to do something really simple. I have a long video. 
but I just want you to understand the technique, the process. Maybe now they're sticking probably because they've been in this box for a little bit longer than they should have been. I have wasn't moving them around, and I put them in here just as I peel them off, so they could still be a little bit tacky. Okay, be patient. The more patient you are, the more uh, bigger pieces you're going to get. I'm not sure what this is. This looks like a piece of our regular original skin that snuck its way in there. Oh, come on. Because we're on camera, it's making it hard on me. I did not pour it in here. I transferred them in here. This may not be the absolute best plastic to store them in. I'm normally storing them in these kind of things, or regular plastic baggies, but... Anyway, we've got enough of the purple components loose to give an idea. Again, these were temporary. Just as I peeled them off, I wanted some box that still had holes in the side that they could breathe, but I hate that they can also shake out of here. So these are, gonna, like I said, temporary, temporary. This is a different blue than the first blue. Really cool. This is a little bit more of a, a teal, we'll find out. And you've got a front side and you got the back side. The bottom side, the mica, dro mica drops too. So you might that find that more interesting. But when you have a flip side, a light and a dark side, of course it's gonna add uh, variation to your work. And just for grins and giggles, Guess we're gonna find out. I know one of these is spice pumpkin and one of these is ginger peach, which is that brilliant orange. Now, this old bag, they're like I said, I made these years ago on believe it or not, I rolled them out on um, the plastic bags you get from the grocery store. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this over the bag and split it. I've got a bamboo skewer here. Get my glasses on here and kind of split this. See, it flakes off. I've got still got my big piece and I split off a chunk of this stuff. Okay, I'm going to put the rest back in the bag. By the way, I can see Carol Nelson using this for her focal pieces and when she's making her sandwiches. If you guys have never looked her work up, Carol Nelson, just like a sound, Carol Nelson abstract art. Okay, and I'm going to add a little orange to the bottom of this. Maybe I'll add a little orange to the bottom of this where it kind of goes into the blue. Okay, so why am I laying this on this canvas? Well, <clears throat> years ago I did two pieces and one was a sunflower. Now I was duplicating a uh, rubber stamp image that I had seen. Um, had a the center of the sunflower and the leaves shooting off to the right. I can't remember the name of the artist. Sandy Miller, I think, was the name of the stamp. So years ago, okay, now everybody don't laugh at me. 18 years ago, I did this piece. Now, in hindsight, I might have actually painted this black, knowing how colors pop. And there is a little dent in here. I'm going to have to patch this thing in and fix it. But... The entire center, I painted it with yellow, and then if you look closely, I dropped, let's see as this camera gets closer to it, those metallic chunks to simulate the seeds of a sunflower. Now, a couple of them I might have been knocked off over the years. This has been on display year after year at lots of different trade shows, just to give people an idea and a concept. I think this is years ago. People did not want to get their hands messy. They were terrified of playing with pigments. But the trick was, how did I get them to stay down? Okay. And um, one more time, I'm sorry to, I don't want to make you guys go dizzy, but if you look at the center of this sucker, those are rings, partial little rings put around the center to kind of build it up with the seeds coming out. Now, I do want to finish this. I intend to finish this sometime soon. That's one reason why I made all those extra colorful components and figured I could do something with this. And for those of you who have been concerned about how our paints hold up after 18 years, 
Uh, they're pretty bright after 18 years. This is primary elements mixed in um, an acrylic medium. Of course, now we have the vivid acrylic enamel, which is even more gorgeous because it's not matte. Uh, but it's not bad after all these years. Okay, so let's work on our little piece. Okay, this is the trick I wanted to show you guys. Now, in theory, I could have my rest of my thing done and more painting done, but I just want to focus on these crispy skins. <laughs> when I first saw them, I thought I had this fantasy, oh, maybe I can make some and sell them and call them Boreal. And then I thought, okay, I make them, but how the heck do we package the darn things? Okay, so... Uh, it's just kind of been a concept, something I wanted to show you guys. But now with the emergence of this whole mixed media, the resin, the, the uh, elements, the components, Marie Fondler Grossman teaching her textural obesimo art, it's relevant. Okay, so to stick them down, believe it or not, and I've got two sides to choose from. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick this side up and I'm gonna kinda of go up where that little arrow was in the white. I'm just gonna drip a bit of the what was previously known as Crete. My top is stuck. <laughs> it can happen, my little top's not opening up. Why is my little top not opening up? Here we go. Okay. You might as well see it here. It can happen. It can get stuck. I hope it dribbles out now for us. Here we go. So believe it or not, this stuff will actually lock it down. And guess what? Because it was made with the future, you're gonna get colors bleeding into each other similar to alcohol inks. Oh yeah, this is the turquoise one. but they're still gonna dry with that metallic look. I have no idea what I'm doing here. This wasn't pre-planned. I don't have a finished piece to show you other than the big sunflower. Okay, I'm gonna do this purple one over here. I think this is a red violet one. I even did coral berry. I have some coral berry, some ginger peach. Lots of different colors. So this is the violet one. It's going to bleed the colors that you did make them with. Okay. But they're still going to dry with a component. Now you don't have to do this. If you put them directly in resin, you know the colors aren't going to move. But if you put them in the Revive, because they were made with Revive, the colors are going to move. I'm kind of like... It wasn't my point. I didn't want this to all be runny. Um, in uh, another abstract piece that I did, I actually had the whole background painted with primer element pigments and other colors in paint. I wasn't working on white canvas. Um, but I wanted you to get the idea, okay, this is such a big piece. I'm going to make sure the revive is actually underneath it so it sticks appropriately. It's split, that's okay. I'm just gonna kind of let it go. I'm gonna let it do its thing. Now we're gonna hit this, I believe this is ginger peach. Yeah, there's that wonderful juicy orange that we love so much. I hope this stimulates your imagination, which is kind of the whole point of this exercise. This is not like do exactly the project that I'm doing, even though I know that a lot of people like to just copy what they're doing. It gives them confidence. I get it. I totally understand. Okay. But I also want to stimulate you guys' imagination. Make you think, wow, what if I did that under resin? Or what if I did a Carolyn, a Carol Nelson piece and she makes sandwiches out of different components and then she makes a focal little thing on the top. These could be part of a metallic focal piece on top. Now I'm gonna just try just for grins and giggles to see, I'm gonna push this down. I'm trying, when I'm pushing it down, I'm trying to actually milk a little bit of the color out of the crispy chip 
because I want to see what happens if some of that color goes back up in to the gold. There we go. Let's antique that gold a little bit. It's awfully gold the way it is. It doesn't need to be quite that gold. I can put it sideways here so you guys can see it. And I can come out a little bit. This is puddling because it's wet. Okay. Don't mind it. It's still going to add some beautiful shimmer when it's done. This is all going to look like some kind of pounded, battered metal. Now this is... I'm wondering what color this is because I'm not getting much off of it. Okay. I think this is Spice Pumpkin. Not sure. I'm just going to throw some in here just to see what we get because I think that was Ginger Peach. Spice Pumpkin's a little bit redder. Or I could be wrong. <laughs> I've been known to be wrong before. You can do this with your fingers. You can do it with a brush. You can, like I said, let the colors run back up into your original swipe to kind of stain the colors above. Future dries really, really fast. And here's the coolest part can be resined over 24 hours later. The cure time is so quick on the Future Floor Polish, also, also now known as Revive It. But uh, I always think of it as Future Floor Polish. I mean, I grew up with it. As kids, we always called it Future Floor Wax. Well, there's no wax in it. There literally is no wax in it. I think we need a little warmth down here, just a tiny bit. I know I don't want to duplicate the other side exactly, but I'm seeing that little area there trying to warm up all on its own because there was a bit of gold. I'm just going to put one little drop on there. Kind of rub up this ginger peach or spice pumpkin or whatever color it is. It's going to probably give me some little nuances of green, you know, because the orange is in there, but it's going to give me some variation. It's going to make it interesting. Now, uh, you may want to know, can I put alcohol in it? Probably. I just want to make sure it's all wet here. And I'm not covering the gold completely. Oh, I think I want a little bit of this blue up into my, oh, it's going to make it green. So it's going to look too much like the other side, but okay. I like that I can kind of antique my swipe and rub the color in and out as light as I want. As light or as dark as I want. Sorry. It's interesting, because I did this piece, that original swipe on top of silicone, it's resisting, believe it or not, it's resisting the future floor polish. Which, now I'm going to just spritz got a little bit but not much um, another technique you can use for something like that if you wanted some more texture would be salting you can do a salting technique but I just wanted to throw this out at you I knew the little resin recap since I didn't show you how to do the resin might have been disappointing but I wanted to show you a finished piece my couple pieces my girlfriend and I worked on this weekend I'm not real thrilled about what this did I don't know what that's supposed to do so I'm wiping that strange little pink piece off and writing down the orange a little bit more. So I hope that this has given you just a little idea, a little bit of inspiration. Another thing I can do with my primary elements, definitely more stuff definitely more stuff that I can do with my primary elements art pigments than I thought of okay thank you for joining me hope you guys have a great great Monday thanks bye bye